So when I first came into this group, I was 12. Um, there were a whole lot of adult men around me. I was a very young 15-year-old. Very scary at first, being away from family and friends. To play seven-a-side soccer, a person must have cerebral palsy or acquired a brain injury and is able to walk or run sufficiently to play. My disability is spastic diplegia, which is a form of cerebral palsy in my legs. Growing up through school, you know, it was a bit hard. You just get bullied and it's just the way it is, you know, you just get used to it, I guess. Australia's National Paralympic Soccer Team faces the axe after all of its funding was cut by the Australian Sports Commission. The Australian team is possibly no more. The Paroos are currently fundraising to attend the World Championship qualifiers to be held in Denmark later this year. Sports Foundation CEO said it was vital that the Paroos compete in the qualifying tournament. When we pull on the green and gold, when we wear the Australian uniform, um, you know, you will do everything. About four months ago, we found out we had to raise $160,000. Uh, yeah, so the team banded together. We created a fundraising video. We contacted businesses across Australia, and um, thanks to them and thanks again to the family and friends, we're, we're able to be here. We needed to win that first game against Spain to basically qualify for the for Argentina this year. Nice. Just play up how to take advantage of, of the north side rule. Here's the chance. And it's a goal by Ryan Kinner. The much to serve victory for Australia. It's one of the most enjoyable experiences um, of your life. After a miraculous comeback, the Paroos have achieved the unthinkable and qualified for the ISCPF World Championship to be held in Argentina later this year. The Paroos is about football. You know, we want to be the best. It means proving that anything's possible. Is there a limit? No. How are you doing? Welcome. I'm just going to start your classification. So let's pop over here, head up this end just because we've got a hole down there. And what I want to do is actually check your limbs. Yep. So tell me a little bit about when you were born. Did you have any injuries when you were born or were you very early? Uh, no, not that they're aware of. Yet. Okay. So we're feeling for spasticity, checking reflexes and range. So he's got some spasticity in that biceps. Part of our classifying is that we're trying to establish if the player meets the criteria, the minimal criteria, uh, to play CP football. Then what we're going to do is try and find out for which class you meet, whether you're... Um... To keep the game fair, we need to make sure that there is all the, the right signs for cerebral palsy, acquired brain injury or stroke. It can be quite broad in the different classifications. I myself, I'm a seven, so... That means uh, hemiplegia for me, so down my right side of the body. I think with the quality of footballers coming through now, the classification can, only, can be a very small part of it if, if they're doing all the right things. CP football is a modified uh, version of our normal football as we know it. So the rules are the field is 70 by, 70 by 50, so it's much smaller, roughly like a hockey, hockey uh, field. And the goals are smaller, so it's uh, two times five metres, so five metres long, two metres up. Um, you've got no offsides, so which makes it quite hard physically. Um, then you've got, you can either roll the ball in or you can throw it. That's, you know, that's up to you, whatever you choose. Yeah, two times 30 minutes instead of two times 45 minutes. That's pretty much the main differences. And then various classifications that come into play as well. Cerebral palsy is common. Every 15 hours a child's born with it. And there's 34,000 or more in Australia, 700,000 with acquired brain injuries. And, we want to reach out to them and give them the opportunity to play football. Growing up and only being able to do like one or two juggles and thinking like, oh, you got CP, you're not going to be able to, come. you're not going to be able to juggle. None of the older players could ever juggle either, but I just remember like in the backyard and just get to three and drop it, get to two and drop it, and then. 
fifty and then drop it. And then go to eight hundred. I'm like, it's not bad. A few years ago, we completely lost our funding. We were solely supported from the Australian Sports Commission. Their policy states you have to be a top five country in order to deserve funding. And we woke up one day and the paras were no more. And from there, we felt like we had a point to prove that we were worthy to, to be around. Like, who were they to say that we don't deserve to have a program anymore? We now have the opportunity to prove all these doubters wrong and show everybody that we can compete with the best in the world and show them that we deserve to be on the world stage. If we were to go over to Argentina and not succeed, it'll feel empty. And I'd, I know myself and everybody else in the team doesn't want to feel that. I get so much confidence and self fulfillment through training and, and seeing the team evolve. But when it went away, I went into a massive spiral of depression. I didn't feel like I had any identity left. Like for me, I was a very introverted kind of guy and never socialised with anybody. I really kept to myself. I was uncool at school, I was unpopular, I couldn't talk to girls, never had a girlfriend. And I was so insecure about my cerebral palsy and I've always felt different, I suppose. But when I have a really good chat with one of the one of the team one of the players from the team or we really get deep and talk about what's holding us back or I feel like I'm I belong and I feel like I'm a paru. The Sydney football's been going on for a long time. The winner is Sydney. So Australia you know, obviously was awarded the Sydney Olympics and with that comes the Paralympics and host nations are granted automatic entry. So Australia went about developing a CP football team for the first time. I was fortunate enough to be named the captain off the bat, which was, which was hugely honouring for me because I was still very young. I, I think I was still 19, maybe 20 at the time. So we, uh, we played our, our first internationals against Holland in 99 and we sort of we walked all over them 6-0, massive result. Um, no one saw it coming and it sort of, you know, we announced ourselves on the international stage with a bit of a bang. I wish I'd have known then just how special it was. I sort of took it for granted, I guess, a little bit. We've had a tournament way back in 2001 where we achieved a top five finish and that's the feeling I want to get back to again. I want these guys to know what it's like to go toe to toe with Russia and have them worried because there was a period where we did that many years ago. I want these guys to feel that because they deserve it and they're good enough. I've got a lot to wrap up before going to Argentina. Got to make sure I stay on top of it. And yeah, I don't want to get there and think that I haven't done everything possible. So the focus is just general strength and conditioning, so building my core up, building my upper body up to strengthen myself against opposition. You know, just looking after myself, <laughs> mental and physical well-being, so uh, I feel shit when I don't train. I feel shit when I haven't been looking after myself. And for my cerebral palsy, you know, it's, it's therapy, it's, um, it's keeping me strong, so. Most days are pretty jam-packed. I have a lot of events I have to go to. I, I kind of always put myself under pressure, always say yes to things, even though if I'm limited on time. Yeah, I, I travel quite a lot. I can be away most weekends, whether it's football camp or for work, so... Um, you've got to make the most of being home when you're home. There's a lot to juggle playing for the Perus. It costs to represent our country, you know. Uh, in time away from family, in, in your uh, annual leave, paying for your training and everything like that, it's, it takes a big commitment, so you have to be dedicated. Let's go. You've got to train when you don't want to train, when it's cold or wet or... You just got to push, you just got to do it. Ah, you can do it. Yeah, so preparation camps for Argentina have been really, really good. Um, some really physical football. Everyone comes in and just 
and gives it everything. That's really important. Uh, the 14 that have been selected are the, the right 14 to be going to Argentina. Um, and to have that much time together has been really useful. I feel like I know who I'm playing with. We all know our roles and responsibilities, what we've got to achieve on the field. Um, so, yeah, feeling, feeling really prepared. Can't forget the hankies. Before flying out, so many different ranges of emotions. You're excited, you're nervous, you're scared because it's such a big thing. You're going to a World Cup or a World Championship and you've been working towards this for so long. This question, have you done enough? Are you prepared? This is from the game against Northern Ireland when uh, Barber got sent off in the 40th minute. So, although we played really well, we still finished, finished up losing and uh, it's just not going to happen again. That game in particular, I'm looking forward to playing again. Here we go. Um, don't need gloves. I think that's it. I believe we'll stop off first in Santiago. Chile. Uh, and then a short trip over the Andes. Mendoza. And then what I'm led to believe will be a luxurious bus ride three or four hours to our final destination. The Pararoos are getting ready to kick off their World Championship campaign with a group stage match against the USA on Tuesday morning. But the team has a tough draw ahead of it, with a match against world number one Ukraine scheduled for later this week, followed by Northern Ireland. Head coach Kai Lammett does not see his team as competition underdogs. Welcome, Australia! Lammett believes the Pararoos are well prepared for the weeks ahead despite his team starting the competition as one of the lowest ranked nations. You need to do it yourself. <laughs> Should I touch it? <laughs> I'm suspended for game one. You know, naturally, that's a bit, bit rough, and it's taken some getting, getting used to. I, uh, I, I had a mistimed tackle uh, in our last game in Denmark against Northern Ireland. I turned around, I already knew I was gone before, before I'd even reached for the card. I knew I was in trouble, and it was a straight red. So that's me out for a week. I hate it. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I hate it. Because I know on game day I'm just gonna be a, a nervous mess with the ability to control basically nothing. You know, that, that, that's taken some getting used to. Face forward and he wants an outlet here. He doesn't want him here, he can't turn there. And don't play a uh, killer ball. I don't think with your number 16 in the world there's an easy group, particularly if 16, 16 teams come to the world championships. So regardless of what group you get drawn in, I think um, it's a tough group. We've been working very hard analysing the US, what they've been doing. I mean, they're number six in the world and they play and train together all the time. They invested a lot of money into the staff, into the system, into the players. So they, yeah, they're going to be hard to beat. Success in Argentina was paramount. Um, everybody knew it. Coaching staff knew it, the players knew it. Zescare gave us an opportunity and a few other sponsors gave us the opportunity to get there. And we needed to show them that we weren't just a team that would go to participate. We were an elite team that would go there and get results. If we didn't do well, yeah, we might have funding for the next couple of years, but our ranking would keep dropping. 
So we had to prove that we deserve the funding. And yeah, like going into that first game, felt like the weight was on our, on our shoulders. Everything has to fall into place today. If everything falls into place today, we win the football game. Yeah, we prepared really well. So now it's uh, yeah, game day. You are better prepared in every sense of the way. So get out of there, be confident, yeah? Go and enjoy yourself, eh? Let's go, boys, eh? Hey! Hey! I was very calm before the game, and it felt like we were going to have a good result or play our game. And the first 10 minutes happened. <laughs> All right. Nothing there, Ben. Nothing there. Strong! Oh, far out. Go for USA. There's not a chance. Good save, Chris. Good save. Strong! Oh, this is my fault. What the hell? Uh, so far, the guys are really, really nervous out there by looks. Um, they're having a hard time calming themselves down. It just it wasn't clicking in my head. I was like, why? No, this isn't right. Like, I felt we were with them more, and, and then obviously, as the minutes went on, that, you know, that obviously wasn't the case. Jimmy's going to fatigue very quickly now. He's going to fatigue very quickly. We have to be really careful to manage him. Part of his disability is once he gets fatigued to a certain point or um, there's certain triggers, he just cannot control the spasms in his muscles. So it's not so much a fit as more as um, a whole body spasm. Well, when I've been exerted either emotionally, um, psychologically or physically, um, my nervous system sort of shuts down a little bit and um, I can't control many of my movements. My stomach contracts, all my muscles in my front, front of my body contract and it pulls me into almost a fetal position over and over again uh, quite violently and I can't really control it. It even affects my breathing and so I did start having a little bit of a spasm towards the end and I had to be taken off. And that's the finish of the match. USA won 6 to 0 to Australia. It's the longest two hours of my life. You do it in training, and then here, suddenly come here, and All not a single pass, it's stuck. We've got to do what we can. It's all right, big man, you worked your ass off today. Yes. Tough late today. Well. It's a hard one, man. It's a hard one. It was tough bouncing back from uh, USA. Really tough. Yeah. I was too calm going into the game. I wasn't focused, oh, but I felt focused. I normally am in wreck before, before every game. I don't want to be there. But I wanted to be there and I was looking forward to the challenge. Mentally, it was in the wrong headspace. I, I felt my effort. In the first half wasn't good enough. If you perform bad, does that mean you're a bad person? After the American game, I, I was questioning a lot of things and I didn't know if I still wanted to be there. I suppose... I don't feel good enough. I don't feel like I deserve to be there. Was, in a sense, I feel like a fraud. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
which was like so long ago, I was nine for my first camp. I remember walking into the, the basketball stadium not knowing what to expect. I thought I might see a bunch of very severely disabled guys and uh, walked in. I think the first person I saw would have been Barb's throwing a ball 50 metres through the air. And I thought, shit, is this cerebral palsy or am I in the wrong room? And at the time, like, I was a kid, like, I didn't understand what anything was. I didn't understand what cerebral palsy was, really. But it was just so exciting to be around the guys. Made my debut for the Paroos in 2005, officially, I think it was. Um, yeah, I was young, uh, 15 years old. For me, it played such a big part in growing up. I didn't enjoy playing local football growing up. Junior football, I was probably under 13s, under 14s, and I had the opposition coach call me a retard. I was having probably one of the best games I'd played in junior football, and, and I just lost, lost my shit. I didn't want to be part of a team because I wasn't given a fair go. You know, I could keep up with everyone. Um, I definitely wasn't behind, and I just couldn't get minutes, you know? Being that little bit different, you can, you can face a range of different challenges, and I know there's a lot of guys in the team that have faced pretty extreme cases of bullying and, and um, you know, torment and stuff through their schooling or sport, and I think that's where the Paroos can come into play and be a, a really good support network for, for, for some of these guys experiencing that. You know, we've come together as a team before and, you know, we often talk about, you know, things that are going on and a lot of players don't know where they'd be without the Paroos or whether they'd still be here and that's really hard to hear. That's, yeah, it's not something you want to hear, but for them, it's the truth. Beautiful day in St. Louis. All of us. Yeah, we had a good sleep. Keen to uh, beat Northern Ireland. Sure. That's the plan. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. This is the uh, the team that I ended up being sent off against last time, so can't wait. Some people didn't have the highest expectations for us, but I did. And you know, we'd pre-examined the draw before we went over. We knew that the USA was going to be a 50-50. You know, if we can get something there, then the tournament can open right up for us. Obviously, we didn't. We took a heavy loss, and then the Ukrainians, we sort of expected a loss there. You always want to get yourself into a tournament as quickly as possible. We'd had two losses. We'd been there for a while now. You know, you just needed to get something positive happening, because if you can just get that little bit of positivity, then everyone starts to bounce and bubble, and, you know, everything happens from there. If they don't, then everything, all those sort of negative thoughts and doubts that they have start to just exacerbate more and more, and it's really hard to drag them back. We needed to go out and show that we could perform against a mid-tier team like Northern Ireland, who we say that we're on the par with, but we haven't really proved it up until this point. But this is where our tournament starts. Let's go, Aussie, let's go! Let's go, Aussie, let's go! Right, the game started pretty even, it was sort of flowing back and forth. Then somehow the ball landed to Zach. He looks up, turns, shoots, goal. One nil. Well, one nil up in the first half. This doesn't happen very often. We had Zach up front. We had Rochi on out the left. We had Jimmy at the right, oh Prescott in the middle, and Barb's and I at the back, and Buddy in goals. I'm like, that's it's probably our strongest starting seven that we've put together in years. On paper, we should turn them apart. But for whatever reason, we always struggle to put what's on paper onto the park. As the game goes on, we start to fatigue a bit. One of their players gets in behind gets taken out, penalty. Well, I think we had maybe a minute to go in the first half. Yeah. 
hard to just say, hey, stop. This game isn't over. Like, this is the one we want. This is where we are. We need to win this now. Last time against this team, <clears throat> we lost 2 0. Yeah? So, hey, now, second half, if we are concentrated, stick to our game plan. If you lose, you can blame me. No problem. <clears throat> stick to the game plan. Yeah? All right? If we have a half a chance, hit it, compose yourself, but try to hit the target and follow up. With the keeper, make sure we follow up and we don't let them shoot. We don't let them turn. We don't let them cross. There's no easy way they can beat us. And still try to get them on transition, yeah? And let's win this football game. All right, boys, eh? Let's go. Let's go. Could we do it? Could we get the win? Or is it just going to be another game where we go into our shells and either get the draw or take the loss? Second half. Starts pretty even again. Out to me. Somehow I'm still up in front of, in front of goal, and it's just me and the keeper. And maybe I'll just kick it. In the final three minutes, they just came at us, and they came at us, and they came at us, and one of their better plays put a low drive through and somehow Barty managed to get it. I don't understand how. It's one of our more affected players and he showed the mobility of an able-bodied player that, 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 for that save. Like, he, uh, he, he got low, pushed it out and we ended up winning the game. <laughs> That's it, I'll keep going now. We're capable, so you're in the next two, next three. That is what winning feels like, and it feels good! No, good, good result. It's a good start. Um, we deserve that win. We work hard for that win. Uh, hopefully, we believe a bit more now in our ability. Didn't honestly believe that Barty had enough of mobility and agility to get down that quick, and he did. And he didn't just sort of parry it. He got a full hand and a strong hand and moved the ball away. You know, and it's just, it was a cracking save and a match winning save, as it turned out. Like, um, you know, anything could have happened at that moment, and he was huge. I pay $140 a week for two goalkeeping sessions. Um, and I know how hard I work for that money and I, and I know the sacrifices that I've made. When I first started playing football, you know, I, I couldn't run for 15 minutes. I sure as hell couldn't push off my left leg. That was a lifetime of, of physiotherapy tables and uh, occupational therapy appointments. So I know a lot of the sacrifices that I've made and, and I know how I used to feel as a seven-year-old watching, you know, Michael Bevan hit the winning runs against the West Indies. Um, and wanting to play for Australia, and I know all of that. What I'm perhaps uncertain of um, when I walk out into the tunnel is um, who I am and um, what, how good I am, and um, uh, you know whether or not I can perform this role as a goalkeeper. You're the one that you see. You see the goals go past you. You know, you, you see the mistakes um, and you do wear it, um, and I wear it, and, I, and maybe I take it too personally. Um, uh, I guess maybe rather than what I was, rather than winning, what I was seeking was validation. What I was seeking was, was validation through winning, and um, maybe I have to find another way to, to get that validation from playing, but um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to try to win. The mindset changed, obviously. Uh, we, that they, they believe that they can do it, that they believe they can beat anyone. And once you have that, I think it's a very powerful thing. Once you believe, it's... It, pff, sky's the limit. The Number 14, Zach Jones. Shoot, goal! Yeah. Let's go! Oh, Portugal! 
We have full time. Australia has won 3-2 to Japan. On Monday night, a couple of the boys started to have a bit of a grumbly tummy. And um, we thought, well, it might, might have just been a reaction to something they'd eaten. But um, one of the boys in particular, Benny Roach, um, he, you know, had the kind of cramps in his tummy and temperature was starting to go up. But about five o'clock in the morning, I got a knock on my door. Uh, and I opened the door and Benny's standing there. And, uh, yeah, he, he looked pretty terrible. Um, he was as pale as a ghost, and I thought, oh dear, he's definitely not going to be playing tomorrow. And Rochi was an integral part. We, we, uh, I'm not going to mince my words, we needed him. So I managed to catch some form of bug, and I spent the night uh, vomiting and pooping a lot, and uh, just trying to get right for the game, so I just had a uh, a drip to try and get my fluids back up. Benny, being Benny, said, no, I'm, I'm willing to do anything and I'll just uh, push right through. I said to, to Kai, the, the manager, we're probably going to get 15, 20 minutes out of him. And then the rest was kind of a blur. I didn't remember much of the game at all. Um, looking back on the footage, I. Every time I touched the ball, it just seemed to go miles away, and I was just really, really sick. But not only Benny, a couple of the other guys had the, the kind of tummy bug as well. I remember talking to Ben right before kickoff, but he was so crook. Um, but sure enough, he uh, he played in the game and he, he scored the opening goal, and it was a cracker. De Piñeiro, la pelota de Piñeiro, atento Ben Roche, le pegó por arriba. What about scoring that goal? Do you remember anything about that? Or? Nope. No, not until I saw it back. Um, looks amazing. Yeah, looks great. I, I honestly don't know how he did it. <laughs> and then you're, we might be here, we might be on here, we might be making history right now. Zach scores. This could be it. We, we might be able to do it here. We've got five minutes to go, 2 0 lead, and we might be playing off ninth position. <laughs> and the final whistle went, and it was so emotional, and the boys were so emotional, and it was so much elation. Get behind these boys. Most able bodied footballers are um, wrapped in cotton wool a bit more. If there's any kind of niggles or any kind of uh, problems, they just said, no, you're not, you're not playing in the game. But, you know, um, these guys show a, a different level of commitment. Uh, feels good, I feel like rubbish. <laughs> that feels really good. I will straight off, eh? And, you know, they go the extra mile for the team um, and they've got almost like a kind of family bond that I haven't really seen with many teams that I've been away with. My nose started bleeding when I headed the ball and it's swallowing blood the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Managing the power is it's all very new to me and I remember sitting down with Kai the first day and he said, it'll change your life. There's no elite nature within the staff group. Everyone's sort of one family. Those staff in the background, they sometimes maybe get forgotten from those moments where it is a collective and everyone's in the photo, but for them to wait for me to run down and make sure I was part of it. It's a nice feeling to know you're, you're really welcome and they've included you in the group. That's special. Thank you.
That's what winning feels like, and it feels good. <laughs> For competition underdogs, the Pararoos have surprised everyone at this tournament with their incredible resurrection. After early losses to the USA and Ukraine, the Pararoos hit their straps with a confident win against Northern Ireland. They continued to build up ahead of steam by defeating Japan and followed that up with a convincing 2-0 victory over Portugal. In Australia's final game of the tournament, they'll face host nation Argentina as they battle it out for ninth place. This would be the Pararoo's highest finish in a tournament for nearly two decades. You always want to play the host nation, but that game and that night had more of a, a gold medal match feel to it. It was funny, like the atmosphere in the stadium, they had a good crowd knowing that it was their last game of the tournament and a lot of people expecting them to win. I hadn't played Argentina in years, but I think in reality we'd grown so much each game throughout the tournament that we were calm, um, we were ready to go, we wanted it. Compared to Portugal, Argentina are a, a whole another beast. Uh, they're technically unbelievable, the world-class football is going forward, but they don't like to defend. Subiendo el jugador con saca número 2 en el conjunto albiceleste, Germán Rossi. Germán Rossi pierde el balón, la gana el número 2 del equipo australiano, Ben Roth. We had, we had the game to lose, but we had nothing to lose. You know, they were expected to win. They were expected to destroy us. Esperadamente, Zach John le va a ganar la posición, la va teniendo por el costado izquierdo, el número 2 engancha hacia adentro, Ben Roth, Ben Roth con la pelota. Lo tiró, lo, lo hizo y falta de Ben Roche en perjuicio del hombre argentino, de el número 6. They came at us hard. They, uh, they gave it to us big time. But we matched him. One on one, we matched him all over the park. Si no, Rizzo el zurdo se va a dar vuelta de cabeza para Mariano Morana y David Barber. El pelotazo largo, tan largo va Matías. Obviously, our last few meetings with Argentina went very one sided to them. I think our last meeting with Argentina was 13 0 to them, actually. If we could keep the game close for long enough, there'd be chances. Cinco más el arquero, los que tienen que llevar la pelota y el juego adelante para que Argentina tenga chances. Perfecto, la tiene Preston. Nicolás Prescott va Nicolás Prescott. Oh, lo que se acaba de perder ese juego. It felt like we were, we were in the game. And then somehow they pulled this bullshit goal out. Tino, atento por esta jugada. La tiene Rodrigo Lugrín. Va el zurdo por el costado izquierdo. Va para Mariano Morana. Tiró. We were all over him, and a slight lapse in concentration, and we go down 1 0. Argentino, los 25 40, Mariano Morana. So we're 1 0 down. Jimmy, I don't know how he does it, but he makes another long busting run down the line. Somehow keeps the ball in play. Prescott's free, sees his one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and absolutely drives the ball into the bottom corner. I didn't think it would come back so quickly. Nick's goal was just incredible and I felt confident from there. The game flow had sort of moved a little bit after Nick's goal. They were really starting to doubt themselves, and on the pitch, they were arguing with each other a lot. They were resulting in this sort of a dirtier style of play. There was a lot of rough stuff coming in, a lot of late stuff coming in. Teams like that, you know, when they're on top, they're nice and clean and smooth. But when they're not, they start to really get in and niggle, and we saw that very quickly in the second half in particular. Contra 
para el equipo argentino. Lo trabó de atrás y me parece que Atril es un We're doing well, we're keeping them at one on which is good. We've, we've got a few chances coming our way. Extra time, a good try. So. After 60 minutes, like, we're all gassed. They're gassed. But we believed. La va teniendo Figueroa, Figueroa que la pierde con el jugador de Argentina, la va subiendo Germán Rossi, Germán Rossi la tiene para Bonomi, Bonomi que se va a dar vuelta, atento, le va a pegar, tiró, gol, Obviously, the game didn't end the way that, that I would have liked it to, um, with a, a late red card, which was which was rough. I honestly believe that the referee made a mistake on that, and you know, over time they, they actually rescinded the the send off as well, which was huge, but obviously didn't change that moment. Nicolas Prescott. It was literally the last kick of the game. Nick had this incredible free kick. Nicolas Prescott. Nicolas Prescott con el segundo asistente. We just saw it going, 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 and she was going towards that back post and just go wide. El costado Argentina. Ganó Argentina 2 a 1 el equipo australiano. Final, final del partido. So we're obviously here at the Paru's Development Centre, which has been set up after we've had a pretty successful trip to Argentina. And uh, this has been one of the good uh, initiatives that have come out of our massive success. And uh, to come back here and now see the next generation come through and I'm sure a few of these guys will take our spots over the next few years. I saw a young girl, a 10-year-old girl who uses only her CP foot. I didn't use my CP foot until I was 19. <laughs> Now, the next generation are going to be unbelievable. And they've got players like Taj, B Benny Sutton here, players that have done it, and they can be shown the path on how to get there. <laughs> We're going to be a powerhouse for years to come. Introduce yourself over there. I think the kid doesn't really want to come over. Do you remember the first time that I came to one of these things? And mum and dad had to drag me out of the car. <laughs> and you don't realise at that moment how much of a massive influence it's going to have on your life. Push, push me. Push what me. would you say to, you know, young Ben Atkins? Nobody gets to experience this. I wish everybody could. But 
if you've got cerebral palsy, you're lucky enough to be eligible to put your, put your name in the ring. The best thing to happen to me in my life was to be born with cerebral palsy. And you're gonna have some great times, but you're gonna have some shit times. If you wouldn't wanna do it with anybody else. Club, I, I, I was going to, but I didn't really want to. But my brothers play for a club, so I just practice with them in the backyard, and they teach me and everything. When I grow up, I want to be a para guru or a para Olympian because kids can learn more about soccer, and everyone can get high and high, and they can maybe think they can play with the para gurus or maybe play with the able body team. Um, well, I've always had that dream of being a pararoo when I grow up. Um, it's always been a thing special inside my heart to um, play with my mates at the Cerebral Palsy Alliance and I'm working really hard to achieve my dream. Um, I would really like to be a pararoo as a goalkeeper because since I was um, 10, I really wanted to be a goalkeeper and save a lot. <laughs> yeah.